Hi, welcome to this Corp Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the line symmetry and rotational symmetry practice questions. If you need any extra help on either of those topics, if you go to corpmaths.com and forward slash contents or the videos and worksheets section, and you go down to videos 316 and 317, there's dedicated video tutorials there on line symmetry and rotational symmetry. Um, but if you need any extra help on the practice questions and the answers to the practice questions, I'm going to go through them in this video. So let's get started. So question number one, question number one, it says an arrow is drawn below, so we've got this arrow, and we've been asked to draw all the lines of symmetry on the ship. So you can see this arrow would have one line of symmetry, it'd have a vertical line of symmetry passing through the middle, so I'm just going to draw that now. And that's it, that would be the line of symmetry, and there's no other lines of symmetry, so that arrow has one line of symmetry, and it's that vertical line of symmetry there. Okay, question number two. Okay, let's have a look at question number two. Question number two says a rectangle is drawn on a centimetre grid. So we've got the centimetre grid, so each square is one centimetre by one centimetre. And we've got this rectangle, and we've been asked to draw all the lines of symmetry on the rectangle. So a rectangle will have two lines of symmetry. It'll have a vertical one and a horizontal one. So let's draw those now. So that's the horizontal line of symmetry. It passes through the middle of the rectangle, horizontally like so. And the vertical line of symmetry, it'll have to be in the middle, so it'll have to be here. And that's it, that would be the two lines of symmetry. So you've got the horizontal one, and then you've got the vertical one, and that's it. Okay, and part B, part B says find the area of the rectangle. So remember it's a centimetre grid. That means each of the squares is one centimetre by one centimetre. So it's one centimetre by one centimetre. And the area of each square would be one centimetre squared, so one centimetre squared. So in terms of this rectangle, you could just count the number of squares inside of it and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So the area of this rectangle would be 20 centimeters squared. So that's one way to do it. Alternatively, you could look at the length of the rectangle, which would be five centimeters. You could look at the width of the rectangle, which would be four centimeters. And five times four, five times four, is equal to 20 centimeters squared. So the area of the rectangle would be 20 centimeters squared. And that's it. Okay, our next question, question number three. So question number three says a polygon is drawn on the grid below. So we've got this polygon and part A says circle the name of the polygon. Okay, and we've got four choices. They are quadrilateral, octagon, pentagon and hexagon. Okay, so let's count the number of sides. So I'm going to start with this side here. So one, and then I'm going to go across two, and then up here, three, and then up here diagonally, four, and across the top, five. So that polygon has got five sides. That means it's a pentagon. So that means it's a pentagon. So let's circle that. Okay, part B. Part B says, how many lines of symmetry does the polygon have? Well, if we have a look, this polygon has got one line of symmetry. It would have that horizontal line of symmetry there. That would be the only line of symmetry. Now, the question didn't actually ask us to draw that line of symmetry. It just says, how many lines of symmetry does the polygon have? So the answer would be one. Okay, question number four. Okay, let's have a look at question number four. So question number four, we've got these four shapes, A, B, C, and D. And we've been asked, which two shapes have got line symmetry? So in terms of which shapes have a line of symmetry, A doesn't have a line of symmetry, B does, it's got a vertical line of symmetry like so. D doesn't, but C does, C would have a diagonal line of symmetry like so. So B and C have got lines of symmetry, so which two shapes have a line of symmetry, B and C, and that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number five. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number five. So question number five, we've been given a square, and we've been asked, what's the order of rotational symmetry of a square? And we've got four choices, one, two, four, and eight. So we're looking for the order of rotational symmetry. So let's rotate this square through 360 degrees and count how many times it lands on itself. So let's have a look. One, two, three, four. So the order of rotational symmetry of this square is four, and that's it. Okay, our next question, question number six. So question number six, we've been asked to write down the number of lines of symmetry and the order of rotational symmetry of these shapes. Okay, so I've drawn all the lines of symmetry on the shapes. Now, we didn't have to do that, but I've just drawn them just so we can talk about them. So in terms of this shape, it has got two lines of symmetry, the vertical one and the horizontal one. The trapezium, this one has got one line of symmetry. This star has got one, two, three, four, five lines of symmetry. And in terms of this rhombus, it's got two lines of symmetry. So that's the lines of symmetry that the shapes have got. Now I'm just going to get rid of those lines of symmetry, and then we'll talk about the rotational symmetry. Okay, so in terms of the order of rotational symmetry, remember that's how many times the shape would land on itself if you spin it through 360 degrees. So in terms of this shape, if we were to spin it 360 degrees, it would land on itself once, and then twice. So the order of rotational symmetry for this shape would be two. In terms of this trapezium, if we were to spin it through 360 degrees, it would only land on itself at the end, so the order of rotational symmetry would be one. Our next one, the star, as you spin this star through 360 degrees, it would land on itself five times. 
And the rhombus, if you were to spin that for 360 degrees, it'd land on itself twice, so the order of rotational symmetry for the rhombus would be two. And that's it. Okay, question number seven. So question number seven, we've been given a regular hexagon. So this is a regular hexagon, and part A says write down the order of rotational symmetry of the hexagon. So because it's a regular hexagon, as you spin it through 360 degrees, it would land on itself six times. So the order of rotational symmetry would be six. And part B says draw all the lines of symmetry on the shape. So let's draw all the lines of symmetry on this regular hexagon. Because it's a regular hexagon, it'll have six lines of symmetry, so let's just draw them. And that's it, we've drawn one, two, three, four, five, six different lines of symmetry. Obviously this one would be that line and so on. So that we've drawn the six lines of symmetry. So we've been asked to draw all the lines of symmetry on the regular hexagon. That's our answer. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number eight. So question number eight, we've been given four shapes. We've got a trapezium, a square, a kite, and a rhombus. And part A says write down the mathematical name of shape C. Well, that's a kite, so let's write that down, kite. Okay, and part B says, which shape has got order of rotational symmetry 2 or rotational symmetry order 2? So in terms of the orders of rotational symmetry, they would be, if you span that through 360 degrees, it would land on itself once. The square, if you span it through 360 degrees, it would land on itself four times. The kite, if you span it through 360 degrees, it would land on itself one. So the order of rotational symmetry of that would be one. And this rhombus, if you span it through 360 degrees, it would land on itself twice. So the order of rotational symmetry for the rhombus is two. So which shape has got order of rotational symmetry two that's shape d and that's it okay question number nine okay let's have a look at our next question question number nine so question number nine we've been given a variety of road signs so the no waiting sign the roundabout sign the keep left sign the humps in the road sign the level crossing with no barrier sign and the national speed limit sign and we've got these road signs we've been asked to write down the number of lines of symmetry and the order of rotational symmetry of those signs so in terms of the no waiting sign, it would have two lines of symmetry. It would have a diagonal one going this way and a diagonal one going that way. So it would have two lines of symmetry. And in terms of the order of rotational symmetry, if you were to spin this through 360 degrees, it would land on itself twice. So the order of rotational symmetry would be two. Next, the roundabout sign, the lines of symmetry, it wouldn't have any lines of symmetry because, if, for instance, if we were to do the vertical line, the arrow would reflect over here. The, the head of the arrow would reflect over here. So it wouldn't actually land on itself. So the number of lines of symmetry for this sign would be zero. And in terms of the order of rotational symmetry, if you were to spin it through 360 degrees, it would land on itself three times. So the order of rotational symmetry for the sign would be three. Okay, the keep left sign. The lines of symmetry would be one, just this one diagonal one here, so one. And order of rotational symmetry would be one as well. It would only land on itself once if you spin it through 360 degrees. The humps in the road sign, it would have one line of symmetry, this vertical line like so, so one. And the order of rotational symmetry, if you were to spin it through 360 degrees, it would land on itself just once, so the order of rotational symmetry would be one. In terms of the level crossing sign with no barrier, it would have two lines of symmetry. It would have a vertical one and a horizontal one. It wouldn't have the diagonal one because this would reflect up there somewhere, so it wouldn't land on itself. So the lines of symmetry would be two. And the order of rotational symmetry, it would land on itself twice if you were to spin it through 360 degrees, so the order of rotational symmetry would be two. And in terms of the national speed limit sign, it would have two lines of symmetry, this diagonal and that diagonal. And the order of rotational symmetry would be two as well. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 10. So question number 10, we've got this grid and we've got some squares shaded on the grid. And part A says shade one more square to make a pattern with one line of symmetry. So don't shade this one here in because that would have two lines of symmetry, a vertical one, a horizontal one. I'm thinking perhaps I could shade this square in here. Now there's probably different options you could choose here. You could choose this one over here. You could perhaps choose this one over here. But I'm just gonna shade this one in here just to show you that if you were to shade this square in here, then it would have one line of symmetry. It would have this horizontal line of symmetry going across like so so that would be a pattern with one line of symmetry part b we've been given this shape here and we've been asked to shade one more square to make a pattern with rotational symmetry order two so i'm going to shade this one here in here because if you were to spin this shape through 360 degrees it would land on itself twice once that way and once whenever you spin it through 180 degrees and that's it Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 11. So question number 11, we've been given this equilateral triangle. So we've got this equilateral triangle. And part A says draw all the lines of symmetry. So let's draw all the lines of symmetry on this equilateral triangle. So we've drawn all the lines of symmetry, the three lines of symmetry for the equilateral triangle, like so. And then part B says four small squares are shaded in the diagram below. And we've been asked to shade four more squares in to make a pattern with rotational symmetry order four. So let's do that. Okay, so if I was to choose four squares to shade in, I'm going to just shade in this one. I'm going to shade in this one, I'm going to shade in this one, and I'm going to shade in this one. 
And if you spin it through 360 degrees, it would land on itself four times. That one, that one, that one, and that one. I could have shaded in this one, this one, this one, and this one. I could have shaded in this one, this one, this one, and this one. There's loads of different options there, but I've shaded in those ones. Okay, so that's that question done. Let's have a look at our next question. Okay, question number 12. So question number 12, we've got a square inside of a regular octagon. So we've got this regular octagon, and we've got a square drawn inside of it. And we've been asked to draw all the lines of symmetry on the shape. And the four lines of symmetry would look like this. You'd have the vertical one the horizontal one, the diagonal one, and the diagonal one. And that's it. So that would be the four lines of symmetry. And it's because we've got that square inside of the octagon, we can't have eight lines of symmetry. So that's it. That's the four lines of symmetry. Okay, question number 13. Okay, so question number 13, we've got four shapes. We've got a heart, a square, a star, and an isosceles triangle. And in the table, we've been asked to write down the order of rotational symmetry for each shape. Okay, so for the heart, the order of rotational symmetry for the heart would be one. It would land on itself just once in 360 degrees. Okay, so the order of rotational symmetry for the heart would be one. For the square, it would be four. It would land on itself four times. The star would be five. It would land on itself five times if you were to spin it through 360 degrees. And the isosceles triangle, it would land on itself just once. So the order of rotational symmetry for the shapes would be one, four, five and one and let's just go through that again the heart would land on itself once the square would land on itself four times the star would land on itself five times and the isosceles triangle would land on itself once and that's the order of rotational symmetries for those shapes okay next okay so here we've got the net of a solid shape so we've got this net it's a net of a cube and part a says what's the name of the solid if you were to fold it it would make a cube so that's the net of a cube Okay, part B. Part B says the net's got one line of symmetry. Draw the line of symmetry on the diagram. So let's draw the line of symmetry on this diagram. It would have a horizontal line of symmetry like so. So that would be the line of symmetry for the net of that cube. It's just one horizontal one like so. Okay, and then part C. Part C, we've got the same net down here. And we've been asked to draw more squares to this diagram. So it's got order of rotational symmetry for. So if I was to add some more squares on, I'd probably add on this one here. I would add this one here. And I would add this one here. And now if we have a look at it, this shape would have order of rotational symmetry four. If you span it through 360 degrees, it would land on itself four times. And that's it. Okay, so question number 15. Question number 15 says, Shane draws a triangle, and he says the triangle has got exactly two lines of symmetry. Explain why Shane is incorrect. Well, let's draw different types of triangle. Okay, so I've drawn our different triangles. We've got an equilateral triangle. So with an equilateral triangle, it would have three lines of symmetry, like so. So that's our equilateral triangle with three lines of symmetry. An isosceles triangle would have one line of symmetry. So obviously this particular one's got this vertical line of symmetry. It obviously depends which way around your isosceles triangle is, but it would have one line of symmetry. A scalene triangle wouldn't have any lines of symmetry. Okay, and then in terms of our right angle triangles, well, most of the right angle triangles wouldn't have a line of symmetry, but this one, which is an isosceles right angle triangle, it would have one line of symmetry like so. So we've got our equilateral triangles got three, an isosceles triangle's got one, a right angle isosceles triangle would have one line of symmetry, our scalene triangle wouldn't have any, and that's it. And that's it, I've just written down equilateral triangles with three lines of symmetry, isosceles triangles have got one line of symmetry, scalene triangles have zero lines of symmetry, and right angle triangles have zero or one line of symmetry. And that's why Shane's incorrect. Okay, our next question. Okay, so question number 16. Question number 16, we've got this diagram. We've got this flag shape. And we've got A, the point A. And it says, complete the diagram above so it's got rotational symmetry order two about center A. Okay, so we want it to be order of rotational symmetry too. So I'm going to want to draw this uh, shape, this flag, down here. So that whenever we spin it through 360 degrees, it lands on itself once and then twice. So let's draw that. And that's it. I've just drawn the flag down here. So if we were to spin this about A, it would land on itself once, if you spin it through 180 degrees, and then over time, whenever we spin it through 360 degrees. So that would have order of rotational symmetry too. Okay, our next question, question number 17. Okay, so question number 17, we've got these four shapes, rectangle, square, kite, and rhombus. And we've got some uh, properties. We've got exactly one line of symmetry. So rectangle, no, it's got two lines of symmetry. Order of rotational symmetry two. Yes, a rectangle has got order of rotational symmetry two. So we've got to complete this table. So a square, exactly one line of symmetry. No, it's got four lines of symmetry. Order of rotational symmetry two. No, it's got order of rotational symmetry four. A kite, exactly one line of symmetry. Yes, if I'm imagining a kite, quite often I would imagine it as a vertical kite like so. So it would have that vertical line of symmetry. So it would have one line of symmetry. An order of rotational symmetry two. No, if we spin it through 360 degrees, it would only land on itself once. In terms of rhombus, exactly one line of symmetry. No, it would have two, so that would be no. And then order of rotational symmetry two. Yes, if you spin a rhombus through 360 degrees, it would land on itself twice. So I filled in cross, cross, tick, cross, cross, tick. 
and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 18. So question number 18, we've got this grid and we've got some of the squares shaded in and we've been asked to shade in the fewest possible squares to make a pattern with two lines of symmetry. So if we wanted to make two lines of symmetry, well, we want it to have two lines of symmetry. So I'm thinking that perhaps the vertical and the horizontal line of symmetry would be best here. So I'm going to shade in that one. So then that would then be if I had the vertical line of symmetry, I'd have both of those shaded in. And then I would have to shade in that one as well. And now in terms of this one, well, if we had a horizontal line of symmetry, we would have to shade in that one as well. And then here, this one, we could shade in this one. So we'd have to shade in one, two, three, four squares, and it would be those four squares. And it would have two lines of symmetry. It would have the vertical one, like so, and the horizontal one, like so. So that's the fewest possible squares we could shade in to make a pattern with two lines of symmetry. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 19. So question number 19a, we've got this grid and we've got some triangles and there's one, two, three triangles shaded in. And we've been asked to shade in three more triangles to make a pattern with rotational symmetry order three. So I'm thinking that if we shaded in this one here, this one here and this one here. So if we were to shade in those three triangles, if we spin that through 360 degrees, it would land on itself three times. It would land on itself once, twice, three times if you spin it through 360 degrees. So we've shaded in three more triangles, one, two, three, and we've made a pattern with rotational symmetry order three, and that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question, question 19b. So question 19b says, shade in six triangles to make a pattern with rotational symmetry order six. So there's a few different patterns you could do here. I'm gonna shade in this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, make, making a bit of a sun shape. So we've got this one, two, three, four, five, six. So if we were to spin it through 360 degrees, it would land on itself six times. So that's one possible option. We could have actually just made the regular hexagon. We could have shaded in that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. And if you were to spin that regular hexagon through 360 degrees, it would head over to rotational symmetry six as well. And that's it. So that's it. So these have been the video solutions to the line symmetry and rotational symmetry practice questions. I really, really hope you find it useful. And if you have found it useful, please like this video and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you need any extra help on this topic, if you go to Corp Mavs and go to the videos and worksheets and scroll down to videos 316 and 317, there are video tutorials there on line symmetry and rotational symmetry. And that's it. So I really, really hope you find this video useful. And if you have liked it, please like it and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.